It is good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I'm going to try and remember this password. Okay, we're in. How's everybody doing this morning? I am uh, blessed and honored to be, uh, again, I I know I keep saying it, but I am, and so I'm going to keep repeating it until it wears off. (laughs) Just kidding. Um, Yeah, I spent a lot of time on my knees this week getting ready for Sunday. (laughs) Somebody got it, (laughs) Billy. We were laying tile out in the back, Uh, worn knees this week, but... It's good. We had fellowship. In the middle of all that work, we had fellowship and goofing off. And um, Where's James Green? Can't see it from my house. Um, but we are, th- this might look familiar, and it will be because it's the same scripture as last week. We are in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 through 12, and then later... We'll jump to um, James chapter 1, verses 19 through 27. You might ask yourself, well, didn't we cover this last week? Why why do we need to revisit? Um, I I felt like I had more to say last week, but um, the Lord has been um, working in me as I've been dealing with this scripture, as we plan to lay out vision, as we plan the future of the church, as we gather together, we we want to see um, a healthy and, and, you know, every bench filled and let's schedule several services. You know, that would be a good problem to have. Let's schedule like another service because we have so many people interested in coming to our church. We'd like to see that, right? Um, and so as, as we've been, you know, kind of struggling with that, and I've been praying about it, and um, I felt like we needed to go back to this section of Scripture um, and going to that section in James. Um, and so... Do you guys have your steel toe shoes on today? I don't. Um, and don't, don't get me wrong as we get into this. It's not me saying, it, preaching and saying, you guys, it's, it's us, it's me. I, I'm involved in this. Um, but um, we have to do it together. And, and it starts right here. In the body. Um, will you stand with me? Let's read, and then we'll pause for prayer, and then we'll get we'll get into it. This is Frank reminded us of this last week when we had our, our meeting. This is very important. This, especially here at, at the at the beginning of uh, this section. It's, it's a reminder of where we stand, who we are, and who we belong to. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds, and glorify God on the day of visitation. Lord, we thank you for this morning, for giving us the privilege of gathering together, Lord, for giving us the privilege of being a part of your family. We love you, God, and, and we are so grateful for your grace and your mercy and your love toward us. 
that you would consider us um, to be a part of this mission. Thank you, God. Thank you for that. Thank you for entrusting us. We know we are broken. We're not going to always get it right. But we want to serve you and serve you well and represent you well. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me take your seat. So why are we hitting this passage of Scripture again? We covered it last week. Peter is um, basically calling out the churches that were receiving this letter, and he's calling us out. We get to tell people where it is that we have been brought out of. Can you remember your life before Christ? It's okay to raise your hand. Can you remember your life before Christ? I can. Think on the the hopelessness, the loneliness, all the issues that when we came to the Lord, those gaps that he filled. Can, can we just take a couple of moments to just kind of pause and ponder that? Is that okay? No, no awkward silence. It, it's okay. I, just think on that. Now, keeping that in mind, there are people that are still in that condition. Once we were not a people, right? Once we were not part of the family, we were in fact enemies of God. You might think, what? I'm God's enemy? No. I never did anything, you know, to... I never took his name in vain. I never did any of these evil things. If you were not a part of the family, that's the the way that the word describes those that are not a part of the family. Enemies. You might think, man, I'm a good person. You You should have known me. Or you did know me and you just don't remember. You left Del Rio too long ago. We were enemies, lost. And what Peter is telling us is there are people that are still lost, that God is preparing. He is priming them for you and for me to go and tell them about Jesus. How does that make you feel? That you get to participate in that. That you get to take part in that. Right? It, it should be humbling when we consider where we've, you know, out of the mud and the muck, out of our old sinful ways, he brought us out. He polished us up and cleaned us up and go and tell other people about me. That's what Peter is saying. But we need to be convinced in our faith that this is worth sharing with somebody else. We need to be convinced through and through that this is more important than anything else. That no other solution 
No, no other wisdom, no other guidance, no, no other uh, advice is a bigger treasure than what we've got to share. And that's Jesus. So we are part of this kingdom, this priesthood, this holy nation, so that what? So that we may be able to proclaim. What does proclaim look like? Hey, I want to tell you about Jesus. Is that what proclaim looks like? What does proclaim look like? Jesus is Lord. Amen. So you didn't need a microphone. Tell me about your Jesus. What has he done in your life? How has he worked in your life? Well, he got me a new car. No. What has he done in your life? He has brought us from darkness to light. Verse 10 says, Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Lost without him, no hope. Scattered with no direction. I can remember having no direction. I think maybe my wife might too. Trying everything else to fill that void. And then finally coming to terms with, man, he just... You have to get to the point where you throw your hands up. And I know we're Baptists, but you have to raise your hand and just say, Lord, please, you take over. You guide me. I'm getting a little loud, I know. Some of you might want to take back your vote. But we have to get there, right? We, we need to realize, one of these days I'm going to be brave enough to get down these stairs. We have to get there and, and realize really how desperately we need him. And that is motivating It's humbling and it's also motivating because when we find those people that are hopeless, then we step right in. And those people will come. They will come around. They will surround you. In fact, you may already be ministering to other people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have. You have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. These things that the culture, that the world around us, this message that keeps being pressed right there, right between the eyes, every day. Peter is saying, they are waging war against you. I know we have some veterans here among us and have seen the atrocity that is war.
Forgive me if this offends you, but this scale war is much greater. It's eternity. I don't think Peter is fooling around by saying that word. I think he's being very deliberate, very intentional. And he's saying, these things that wage war against you, I urge you, he says, as sojourners and exiles, abstain. Abstain from the passions of the flesh. There are certain things that attract our attention, being in this body, being in this flesh, that attract our attention. That's material things, lust, um, covet, covetousness. There's all kinds, of, like a little bit more money. Peter is saying, it's a battle. We must make war right back. Because if we don't, we're going to be swept up. Given an inch, ah, oh, this, you know, this doesn't hurt anybody. Or, you know, I'm going to hold this, my material stuff, I'm going to hold it close and be very discriminating as to who I'm going to share it with. Again, I'm not just throwing rocks out there. I'm preaching to myself. We must do battle. And Peter goes on and says, Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, when they are talking trash about the church, when they are talking trash about Christians, and man, those hypocrites. Oh, sorry. Those hypocrites. Then our own conduct, our actions, the way that we live our life, it stands up to whatever they have to say. When they call us bigots, because we don't give in to the culture. Because the culture is not going to influence the church. The church is going to influence the culture. And they're going to wage war against us. Their desires, their passions are going to wage war against us. But our conduct, our behavior, our actions, the way we live our life speaks for itself. So that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. That's amazing to me that our conduct, conduct can be such that those that bring accusations against us will glorify his name. Isn't that amazing? That we can get to that point. Under the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord guiding us, that we can get to that point where if they say, whoever is accusing us, if they say and come and accuse us of something, that our conduct will be such that they themselves, the accusers, the ones that are pointing fingers, will glorify his name. That is amazing. I can't, I'm, I've cleaned up my act a little bit, but let me tell you, I can't do that on my own.
Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable. When we're bagging groceries, when we're fixing cars, when we're laying down tile, even when we're grouting, we keep our conduct, our actions so honorable that it brings glory to the Lord. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. Show off your family resemblance. We have been created in the image of God and being a part of the family as we live day to day, moment to moment, There is a shaping of the clay. We are clay, and he is molding us into more of his image. And so, as we are growing, as we're maturing in our faith, the more we grow, the more we look like him. So let's represent him well. Let's show off our family resemblance. Some of you know my sister. Um, She teaches over at Buena Vista uh, Elementary. And uh, and who was it that I met? I can't remember right now. Um, Anyway, walked up to me and said, I know who you are because they knew my sister. Our conduct is such that people will recognize who it is that we belong to. Okay. Man, you said that last week, didn't you? Yep. Yep, I did. Has anybody heard of the Pareto Principle? Pareto Principle, P-A-R-E-T-O, 80-20 rule. Anybody? One on top, one up there, okay. My wife says, give her 80% of my money, and I think I keep 20. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. Let me read the, the definition and then further explain it. Also, the Pareto Principle, also known as the 80-20 rule, the law of the vital few, or the principle of factor sparsity. That's within um, parentheses. States that, for many events, roughly 80% of the effects come from 20% of the causes. What does that mean for us? Eighty percent of the work gets done by twenty percent of the people. Uh oh. I'm not liking them much anymore. Listen, I want to see those numbers. I want to have those problems of scheduling several several services. I want to impact Del Rio for Christ. There are people that are lost, that are not a part of the priesthood, that are not a part of the family, that are hurting and are lost, and they don't know. They don't know. They are acting in the way that the ruler of this world is making them act. They're lost without hope. All right, so next Saturday, let's go stand on the corner and we'll peach over there and give me a box and we'll scream out and... (laughs) It'll take... Those of us that are a part of the family, it's going to take all of us. 
And we may have to give up on certain preferences. Well, that's not the way that we did it back in the 80s. We're going to ask ourselves some hard questions. Because what's more important? The mission, right? So we ha- as we get into this, we have to keep that at the forefront of our mind, is that the mission is most important. And we'll go, listen, we'll go through... I've talked to Tommy several times. Anything that I do, we want to go through the process. We want to go through the right channels, do everything according to the way it's supposed to be done. But there may be some changes. Are we all on board? Well, We have to always remember, as we are on this mission, where we have been brought from, and the hope that we have now, as being a part of the family, we can't keep to ourselves. We can't hoard it. We can't just... Those that we think ought to receive it, then we're going to share it with them. Everybody and anybody that the Lord puts in our path, pray. I mean, it's going to take prayer. We're going to have to pray on a regular basis and ask God to put people in our path and then to give us the right words to share. There's nothing like someone with good intentions saying the wrong thing. So we have to submit to the Lord's guidance in this. Let's go to James, chapter 1. Man, I'm running out of time again. I'm not even halfway done. James, chapter 1, verses 19 through 27. I'll, I'll move a little quicker through this. Hearing and doing the word. Know this, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear. Quick to hear. Slow to speak. It doesn't mean you go like this. It means you hold back. All right? Are we on the same page? All right? Slow to anger. That's a hard one sometimes, isn't it? Boy, I ought to. For the anger of man does not produce righteousness of God. All right. Peter is my, or James is telling us about this mission. All right? Righteousness, part of the mission. Anger, it doesn't help us out. Therefore, put away all filthiness. He's putting anger in the same category as filthiness. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Peter in chapter 1 was talking about the same thing, about um, being thirsty like newborns, right? For for that milk. If we go to... um, Further reading on that section, the, the word of God. That is that milk. So James and Peter are on the same page, and, and they're saying, Therefore put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. If you feel 
com- conviction from the word, embrace it. We may come in here on a Sunday and, and all be in agreement that what, what the word is saying to us, man, that is true, and I'm glad that I heard it this morning, and then we walk out, and we walk out. James is the one saying this. Okay, not me. Um, let me find my place again. But be doers of the word. Therefore, put away all filthiness, rampant wickedness, receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. If you feel, well, excuse me, but the doers of the word, not be doers of the word and not hearers only. Don't just hear it. Do it. Be doers of the word, not just hearers. Otherwise, we are deceiving ourselves, James says. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror, gazing at that handsome fellow in the mirror, and then you walk away, James says, and you forget what you just saw. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. We may, just, we may hear it, but there is no transformation. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer but who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. We may have uh, um, a problem with the word religion. Well, it's not religion, it's a relationship, and I have a relationship with the Lord through Jesus Christ. Okay. What James is talking about, religion, is what we do religiously in our faith. Not, you know, some veered off belief, you know, that is not orthodox or not biblical. That's not what he's talking about. How is it that you're living out your faith? If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Religion, he says, James is saying, that is pure and undefiled, the expression of our faith at its purest before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. There is going to take some action on our part to go to those that need the help. And then to keep ourselves unstained. Man. We need God to be able to do that. So on a daily basis, we need to submit to the Holy Spirit so that he may guide us, give us clear direction so that we can do what he's asked us to do. We had announcements today. We need volunteers for the children's ministry. We want a youth group. We want big, booming numbers. Hey, we have to have someone that is going to be ready to receive those big, booming numbers. Right? We've got to go through the training. We've got to get ourselves ready. We've got to be in prayer. We've got to be in right relationship with the Lord so that when people come, they will see the family. They will see the royal priesthood when they walk in the doors. Does that ring true? 
So let's prepare ourselves. I'm not going to give you a one, two, three right now, but it's coming soon. So let's just be in prayer. God, let this be our prayer. Lord, whatever and whenever I am yours and you tell me, you guide me, prepare me for it, whatever work you have for me. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, that we are a part of this family, part of this kingdom, this royal priesthood. It is such an honor, Lord, to be in those numbers, to be a part of your family, God, that you have included us, imperfect people, to spread the message, God, to take this message of hope that only through Jesus Christ can we receive. God, give us clear direction, creativity in our thinking, Lord, on ways that we can impact Del Rio for you. Create a movement, God. We are willing and we are here and we are asking, God, for your direction, for your power. Holy Spirit, come and direct us. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.